on the outside looking in right now but both close enough that a win tonight would make them feel a little bit better about their chances. Outstanding officiating crew tonight Mike Eads Mike Roberts and Brian Dorsey are here. Of course the Wolfpack are in red the orange and the home whites and we're ready to go here for the carrier dome. You pumped. I am pumped. I just hope we see shots fall because both teams have the capability to knock down perimeter jump shots. And this Syracuse offense has gotten better and better, particularly when they use Joe Girard on the outside and isolate two of their best scores. They're still waiting for that game when Girard, Elijah Hughes, and Buddy Bayheim all get it going yeah. the same night. Right now, Bayheim, the coach's son, is the hottest of the three. He scored 20 or more points in five of his last seven games. It's just amazing what confidence does. You go back to that Virginia Tech game where, where he goes off for 18 straight. He's been able to build upon that. There he goes. Right on cue. And that allows the Orange fans to sit. They stand and clap until the first field goal of each half. And of course, the Orange in the trademark 2 3 zone. Jim Beheim seems to be getting comfortable with that zone. He's been using it for about 30 some yeah, years now. Yeah, I would right? say so. so. Now that has yeah. suggested from time to time. Right yeah. now, you're going to see the back line wings actually step up a little bit higher. Makes the wings work a little bit more because you don't have that length in the guard position. You know, the, one of the first questions you ask about how do you attack a Bayheim zone is who's in the middle? Who's at yeah. that ACC logo? And it looks like at the beginning of the game, it'll be a big guy in DJ Thunderbolt. Well, we'll see what happens when Johnson comes into the game just to see if they can go with it with a, more of a guard lineup. I, I like having a guard, a good playmaker at the foul line, make passes, but also hit that jump shot. Here's where Bayheim has really stepped up his game, although he missed that one. Not just a three point shooter this year. Braxton Beverly got to respect him from beyond the arc. He made four of them against the Orange in a win down in Raleigh last year. We are at NC State shoot around today and they're working against the scout team which is simulating the Syracuse zone. Yeah good luck. Right. <laughs> Just Look, so much more length obviously when you get these guys on the court. It's it's not about. You know, understanding the rotations, it's actually making it part of your identity, and that's what makes the zone so good. It is a part of who they are. They do it every single day. They communicate well. And in so many ways, attacking a zone is no different than attacking man-to-man. -man. You still have to cut hard. You still have to get inside the paint. You have to relocate to open spots. So you follow the rotations of the zone, not the open area. Wolfpack have lost three of their last four. Funderburg in tight, and he gets the roll to get the pack on the board. And, and I like what they did. You bring somebody over to the corner, it brings the baseline wing out, wing out, and you have room to make that pass. Joe Girard, the two-sport star from Glens Falls, New York, just like a regional hero in central New York actually played football in this building before he ever played basketball Won a state title playing football here and now having a nice freshman season on the basketball court well, he's a guy you just want to see him get going get confidence obviously he knows how to shoot this would help yeah, I, I like the fact that he's chucking it yeah I think he's the kind of guy who scored a ton of points in his life just seeing him let it fly is part of watching them go down good ball moving here on the inside but Manny Bates can't handle the pass and I think that's another premise of the zone is some guys do things they're not used to doing or they do them in different situations and maybe you were Funderburk or Bates a little bit tricky on that pass there's Jerry McNamara I talked to him yesterday about Joe Girard and I said what do you want from him he said I want him to get back to being who he is yeah. attack confident shooting numbers have been down the last few games but as you said well, and this is what you always say, especially when you talk about yourself. You want him to keep chucking. Yes, that's <laughs> very true. Yeah, yeah. It's true, though. I mean, you think about it, he was a volume guy coming out of high school. And if you think he wasn't, just count the amount of points. With 4,000 4, some odd points in high school, that's volume. And volume allows you to create your own rhythm. You've got to figure out how to find rhythm in the game without shooting that much. Well, Elijah Hughes, who doesn't look very comfortable right now, has gone to the bench two and a half minutes in. He never comes out. He plays 40 minutes a game more often than not. And Bryson Goodine, a freshman from New Bedford, Mass, comes in. If that name sounds familiar, he was the guy who had the game-winning basket of the weekend against Wake Forest. Out of bounds, still Syracuse ball. Crowd wanted a foul. They don't get the call. You know, they don't get the call because officials have been so good about giving that, that verticality to defenders. You know, Bayon did a good job of getting his body into the defender, but again, if you go straight up, they're not making that call. 
Still strange to see Hughes on the bench. Quincy Garrier, freshman from Montreal, and there's a foul call on DJ Funderburg. I mean, there's a guy, Elijah Hughes, who plays 38 plus minutes a game, yeah. top five in the country. Uh, but it's not just that, it's not about minutes. He's a lethal scorer. And some of their best offense is when they space out and play iso ball with two shooters on the wing. You can't dig down, you can't help, and he's a great mid-range jump shooter. Syracuse coming off a, a win over Wake Forest on the weekend. They were up big, blew the lead, came back late. And something's going on. Something's going on with Hughes. In the last game, he had a wrap on his right calf for part of the game. And again, we don't know. Is it a, an injury? Is it illness? He's got a he's got an ice bag there. So, so something's going on with Elijah Hughes right now. And that's 19 and a half points sitting on the bench. Beverly, no. Good rebound in traffic by Gerard. Beheim has it taken away. And Devin Daniels will go coast to coast to lay it in. You know, with Elijah Hughes on the bench, this has to be Joe Girard time. You know, you just kick the training wheels out off at this point and understand that your responsibility is to be a creator and a scorer. All things he can do. Beheim, he can do this. A little bit strong in the long rebound out to C.J. Bryce. Bryce coming off a couple of very good games after two consecutive scoreless games. Both of these teams at times will struggle to score. Both of these teams can turn to multiple players. Garrier got a good motor and he draws another foul. This one on Manny Bates. Our first media timeout. Two point lead in the early going for the Orange with Elijah Hughes on the bench. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit Progressive.com. Had another dimension to his game. So over the summer, he worked with assistant coach Jerry McNamara on uh, actually pull-up jump shots. He knew he needed to use his body better and needed game. He said he was able to move more, take that contact. And guys, this just comes from the basics of lifting weights, squats, bench presses, deadlifts, pull downs, and incorporating yoga. He said the yoga is so good that he doesn't even have to ice after games. Speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> well, he's a little bit younger, no offense, Brooke. There's his dad, Jim Beheim, who says, and Jim does not throw compliments around uh, all the time, whether it's for his son or any of the other players, but he says Buddy Beheim is by far the hardest worker that he has coached here at Syracuse and as we all know been here a long time 44 years and I think when he came in John a lot of people wondered even though Jimmy had gone to Cornell that Jimmy didn't come here a lot of people wondered well how good is Buddy and can he play at this level I mean he can play at this level and then some he's turning into one of the better offensive players one of the better shooters in this league well you also have to think I mean just put yourself in his perspective you come in and people are already questioning the validity validity of your skill set because yeah. you're the coach's son so I think you almost have to be the best the, the hardest worker you have to be the best shooter on the floor yeah you have to do all the little things really well good patience inside and Bates can't finish though Gary a down with a rebound a rare moment, and I mean rare this year, when neither Hughes nor Beheim yeah. is in the game for Syracuse. Gerard a miss, so now from an orange perspective, you wonder where the offense is going to come from. That's a great question. I wish I had an answer for it. And, and now Buddy Beheim's coming in for Joe Gerard. You've you got to think you have to have one of those three on the floor. Obviously, Elijah Hughes out. Trying to figure out exactly what the injury is. I, I will say, Elijah Hughes has ice, right. and, and I mentioned this at timeout. If you see a guy put heat on his body somewhere, it's trying to keep it loose. I, ice tells me that he, he might be shutting it down, so we'll keep an eye on it. But I mean, look at these two combined. I mean, top five in, in the country when it comes to three point duo. And Bryce fouled on a three point attempt by Burama Sadibe, the big man in the middle of the zone going out beyond the three-point line, committing a foul and sending Bryce to the line for three. Yeah, the other issue is when you think about the defense, right? Defense, your rotations are different when you have different guys on the floor. Communication's the biggest key, and this is completely a different lineup. Obviously, no Elijah Hughes and no, no Gerard on the floor. 
it's a different lineup, so we'll see if they can communicate, get themselves back into position. Bryce, or a fifth-year senior out of Charlotte, missed four games late December, early January with a concussion, came back, has looked much more like himself the last couple of games. Let's say he's creating his own clothing line. Jeez. Man, how about it? Did you say that it's about to drop? Is it like a uh, is it like a a CD? You know, you're about to drop an <laughs> Clothing album. Lines drop. Clothing lines drop. I'm sure yeah. Brooke has something for it. <laughs> Guys, yeah, I talked tried to talk to him a little bit about that today, but he is very tight lit. So what he did tell me though is that his chaplain over the summer helped him come up with the logo. So he's really excited about the logo, but I have yet to hear anything about clothing plans. Wow. He wants to put his logo on clothes, on planes, on cars. I'm Man. like, all right, let, let's start with some T-shirts. Yeah. <laughs> Just so long as it's not skinny jeans, I'll try anything. <laughs> <laughs> Venturing into too much information territory yeah. right now, John. Dolajai is fouled way out in the corner by Braxton Beverly in a mismatch, to say the least. They weigh about the same, but Dolajai's 10 inches taller. Dolezal to me is an important piece of this team, uh, particularly when you think about what he does defensively. He's going to play that back line wing, but he's also going to move in to the center position. He plays about 34 minutes a game. A lot is asked of him, and I think he can provide more on the offensive end if given the opportunity. 6'10 listed at 185. Beheim deep in the corner. Falls loose, and Goodheim comes out. Beheim again. And down with the rebound is Bryce. Numbers for the Wolfpack. And Markel Johnson will pull it out. Now Behan comes up with a loose ball. He's got Goodine with him. And Goodine will miss the layup. Back to 20 after the offensive rebound. And Behan turns it over. Markel Johnson with a steal and lays it in. There's just zero offensive rhythm for Syracuse right now. And sometimes finding rhythm is watching the ball go through the hoop. I know it sounds simple, but that is truly the case. And on cue, here comes Joe Girard. Again, if you're just joining us, Elijah Hughes is out. Played the first couple of minutes, did not look like himself, and appeared to be icing his groin for a while on the bench, put a jacket on. Yeah. He doesn't look like he's coming back. Who knows? But... So now Gerard is going to check back into the game. There's Hughes, and he does not look like his return is imminent, does well, he? I, I think if you don't have Elijah Hughes, you've got to find the guy, whether it's going to be Buddy Beheim or, or Joe Gerard, who can make perimeter jump shots. That, that's going to be the key right now. Find out who's going to be the guy. And I still think Buddy Beheim can get hot at any moment. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think you should abandon what you do offensively. I, I think you still try to create ISO opportunities for guys like Gerard Beheim. They have the ability to make those mid-range jump shots but you don't have as many guys that can space the floor. A little pressure here, John, from the Wolfpack. Yeah, we expected to see this, and you might as well do this if you're NC State and you have Elijah Hughes on the bench. Pick up the pace of the game. Create your own rhythm against that zone. Good size into Bryce on Gerard. Garrier gets away from his man. Looking for the call that he didn't get, and back comes NC State. Look at this pass! What a pass by Johnson, and what a finish by Daniels. Wow. I, I was about to say that's a terrible pass. <laughs> I don't know how he got that thing through. Talk about threading the needle. I, he puts a little English on this, too. He's got a little right side spin, puts it right through the defense, and then the strong finish. I did not expect this. Markel Johnson doesn't start the game late to practice. Well, he's picking right up. How does that get through? And Markel Johnson of the Wolfpack, number one in the ACC in assists per game, just ahead of Trey Jones of Duke. I don't know how many 50-foot bounce passes he's had for assists, but that was a highlight for NC State. Yeah, that, that was a high, was a top turnbuckle, right? Yeah. High-risk maneuver, yeah. but he somehow got it through. Never yeah. thought I'd get a ref, wrestling reference in a broadcast. That, that's a no, 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 yes on the pass. By the way, it's a 10-to-1 run for the Wolfpack since Hughes went to the bench. And Garrier will break that streak. I, I can tell you the Syracuse offense isn't going to look pretty, but they've got to find ways to manufacture that offense. I, I think you've got to do something defensively to create opportunities on the offensive end. Look to get out and run. And an NC State turnover. If I'm NC State, I say, hey, no live ball turnovers. Don't give them anything easy. That's a ridiculous pass. 
I mean, the finish, I, I'm so glad he made the shot because how many times you see a great right. move and miss shot, and it's still going to end up on a gift somewhere. Gif, gif, whatever GIF. it is. You should, you know more than me. When in doubt, we'll ask Brooke. I was going to say, I really yeah. don't. <laughs> Gary into Dolezal. Can he become an offensive weapon tonight? Leans in, missed it. Boy, the Orange also have had four or five shots that just have to go down if you're going to win a game that they've missed already tonight. You see that a lot when guys go to create contact first. There's something about going into the body. You don't really go to finish. I think you've got to create the contact, but then get that head up at the rim, get it up off the glass, give it a better chance to go in. Gary A. Missed the long jumper. Ball's kept alive by Sidibe, but here comes Johnson. Boy, Johnson's got the ball on a string sometimes, mm -hmm. doesn't he? Oh, and he just glides up and down the floor. Yeah. You think about guys with assist numbers like Trey Jones, Markel Johnson, they play with such poise. Their, their face is like Aaron Rodgers on the, on the field where you're getting chased by a linebacker, but they, they're so focused on what they're doing. That was not me when I played those scrubs. Well, Bayheim, a lot of dribbling behind the back, had to pick up the dribble. And now Gerard got Helms on him. And out of bounds off Garrier to send us to our next media timeout. Syracuse struggling without Hughes, trailing by three in a Seminoles last night. And Carolina with that crushing defeat to Duke on Saturday, now 0 and 3 since Cole Anthony's return. So we talked about the league bubbling over. These four programs are all potentially, they hope, at least in the conversation. Virginia in right now. Joey Brackett's, according to Joe Lenardi, he's yeah. got State next four out. Notre Dame and Syracuse not that close. Coincidentally, Notre Dame is at Virginia right after us tonight on ESPN2. So this is a huge night for these maybe maybe not ACC teams yeah and you start to talk to coaches around the league as Mark L. Johnson knocks one down you talk to coaches around the league they don't feel like the league's as far down as everybody talks says it is but we live in a world of numbers right we attach ourselves to these numbers the net so much that sometimes I, I think it's our biggest problem in this sport the, the sport can't be I don't know uh, qualified by numbers I, I see a certain game on the floor but numbers may tell you otherwise Dolezal can't finish, and another ball bounces down to the Wolfpack. Syracuse is now 3 for 16 from the field. Yeah, those numbers aren't good. No. I can, I can, I can, I can, yeah. I can attest to that. And the two teams have combined for two assists and nine turnovers. There's a beautiful assist. Great ball movement against the zone by the Wolfpack. Yeah, well, now it's the opportunity where we can sound like we're smart and say you want to get to the ball, the high post or the short corner. And when you get it to the high post as the defense is rotating, that's your opportunity to get that thing down low. And not to belabor the point, but it's been a different game since Elijah Hughes went to the bench. Not that he was... You know, dominating when he was out there, but even if he's not feeling 100%, and he clearly wasn't, he's a threat, he's a star, yes. he's a 20 point a game guy. He doesn't look like he's coming back in anytime soon, and it's been all NC State since he went to the bench with what now we have officially been told, not a lot of detail, it's a lower body injury. That's all we're being told. Let's go to Kevin Nagandi back in the studio. Hey, no, Kevin Agani, you got Greenberg and you got Farnham here, but at the, how about what's going on West Lafayette? Penn State up 42-30. Penn State's knocked down 10 threes, Farnham. What do you think about that? An unbelievable performance in the first half. Lamar Stevens has been riddled with foul trouble. Only nine minutes played for him, but yet their guard play has stepped up. This is a team that can advance in the tournament. I can't believe the Big Ten has survived now that Christmas not covered it. I think Greenberg's got a point. What I'm wondering is how is studio surviving without a host? Those Whoa. two guys running the show. <laughs> Thunderbird just picked up his second foul, and that's going to send him to the bench. Manny Bates will take his place. And it looks like more full court pressure coming here from the pack. You know, as poorly as Syracuse has played offensively, it's still a six point basketball yeah. game. It, it doesn't feel like that because yeah. there's not much energy in the building, and offensively, there's no rhythm. Yeah, if you, you continue to fight and find opportunities, you'll be all right. Yeah, if you're a glass half full Syracuse fan, that's what you're hanging your hat on right now. Great offensive rebound by Sidibe. Garrier forces it up. 
And another miss. They just can't put the ball in the basket right now. Is there such a thing as a glass half full fan? <laughs> I, don't think that's, I don't think that exists. Daniel shut off on the baseline, finds Helens. Nice extra look in the corner to Bryce. It's amazing what happens. That little triple drive to the short corner, throw to the high post, look opposite. It's going to be there. It's just whether you can get it to, to those spots or not. Beheim, Dolajai, and finally they connect. I always look at the crowd after the team finally scores, and it's a very sarcastic cheer, right? It's like about time. Now the noise ratcheting up here with the Carrier Dome. Missed by Johnson, Syracuse ball. Been an up and down year. They lost four out of five in non-conference play. Felt they should have been able to win some of those games. They've got their work cut out for them in league play if they're going to make the tournament. And Gary A doing what Gary A does best. And that is what he has to do. He's had a tough time getting to the basket and finishing. It's been physical, but those offensive rebounds on the backside, he's going to be there. Turnaround jumper at the free throw line won't go down for Jericho Helms. The momentum starting to shift here in the carrier dome, and it continues. It's amazing what just opportunities create. You know, you get an offensive rebound, a stick pack, the ball moves a little bit better, you attack with with more, more of an assertiveness. I think that's the biggest difference. When you see the ball go through the basket, you actually attack to score. You attack to make something happen, as opposed to just attacking an open space. And nobody has to say to Gerard or Beheim with Hughes on the bench, they got to get all they can get out of those two guys. Again into the middle to Helens. Out to Bryce, big three-pointer for State. Well, what did Kevin Keats tell us to shoot around? He said, when we get the ball to the high post, we don't want to just move it too quickly unless it's something wide open. Sometimes you just got to sit and wait. Let the defense rotate, throw back to the top of the key. Hey, Gerard's oh. feeling it, Mr. Crispin. I think he's back in attack mode. Yeah, he, he made his uh, that little stink face after his last shot, yeah. and you can tell he's starting to feel it. Confidence is everything. back to the orange Joe Girard's that guy he got it in transition attacked the basket got the end one opportunity lost three in a row fell out of the rankings this week you can also watch that game live on the ESPN app and if you're watching on the app right now if you're watching this game you've seen Joe Girard going off in the last few minutes I mean you think about how many times we've heard the story about somebody goes down with an injury and somebody gets the starting role and they just take off. Well I think this is an opportunity for Joe Girard to to realize his responsibility. His responsibility for this team is to be a scorer. It's to create. It's not only to create space at times when you got guys like Elijah Hughes and Buddy Beheim on the floor but you got to create scoring opportunities for yourself and for others. He's doing that tonight. And Syracuse back within two. NC State had a lead as big as nine not that long ago, and the Wolfpack keep the pressure on. State right now going without DJ Funderburg, who's got a couple of fouls. Manny Bates is also on the bench, so Danny Dixon is in the game. A grad transfer plan in the middle right now for State, and they come up with a turnover on the inbounds play. Let's go to Brooke. Yeah, the pressure was exactly what Coach Keats talked about in the timeout. He said, we did great for the first nine minutes, but then we started to back off. They don't like pressure 94 feet, but if we allow them to play a half-court offense, that's when they get in their flow. And you guys, you mentioned Danny Dixon coming into the game. He made a good point of looking at him right in the eye to say, be ready, man. We're ready for you. All right, Brooke, thank you. In and out on the corner three, back over to Syracuse one thing that's going well for the orange that where you'd think NC State would have a little bit more success they're not getting any offensive rebounds yeah tonight. they really aren't and I, you got to give credit I mean Buddy beheim has got to find ways here to get himself open but you got to give credit to just understanding where you're at at all times in that defense Joe Gerard continues to carve up this defense he's got a dozen and Syracuse has come back to tie it and now Gerard when he gets back on D Trying to whip the crowd into a frenzy, get them to make more noise. 
How about this? Your four man and your five man running the break, and they make it happen. Not exactly how you draw it up, <laughs> but you're creating opportunities off these turnovers. If I'm not if I'm, if I'm mistaken, I think that's nine turnovers right now for NC State. Only about four points off turnovers, but still. Turning the basketball over eliminates rhythm, and you're trying to create rhythm on the offensive end when you're going against the zone. So the Orange and probably in the lead without Elijah Hughes. And we get a foul going against Syracuse. It probably is the truth. You think about not having one of the best players in the conference on the floor, and here you got your four and your five just as you draw it out. Leading it down the floor, and Joe Girard has been terrific offensively. I don't think you can lose him. You've got to be aware of where Joe Girard's at at all times because he's one of the key scorers on the floor right now. The foul went on Girard, his second. For a lot of coaches, that means you go to the bench for the rest of the half. Jim Beheim's not one of those guys, and they really can't afford to do well, that right not now. Not today, but also you feel like you can protect him a bit in the zone and just ask him to, to be smart. That's really what it's all about. Pat Andre, grad transfer, played at Lehigh, number 31 for the Wolfpack, is into the game first time. He was touch and go to play tonight with an ankle injury, but he's in there as Garrier comes up with a block shot and Syracuse controls. Good cut by Garrier, and he's rewarded with a trip to the line. And that's Garrier's game. I mean, it's about carving up a defense with a cut, not the dribble. You know, getting second chance opportunities. A lot of these things don't show up even in the stat sheet because he's not going to score a ton. But when you cut hard, you draw defense. Defense has to rotate your way. Those guys are important for the shooters around the perimeter as well. Sixty-seven percent free throw shooter. Hughes has not gone to the locker room. And again, all we've been told is it's a lower body injury. We don't know if he's probable or not likely to return. We'll try to get you more information, but it sure doesn't look like he's in game mode right now. Yeah, I was going to say, I mean, body language alone looks yeah. unlikely, but again, what, what do we know at this point? It'll be interesting to see what happens at halftime, whether he's able to get things loosened up. Andre from Shot the back. corner, the assist to Johnson, and that'll tie it for the pack. And that's big. I mean, that's not something you expected coming in. We weren't even sure if he was going to play. And the fact that he's able to get that open look in the corner and make something happen, it's important. Find offense wherever you can get it. Like two here is, is that ball screen throwback. You can't defend everyone if you overload that side. That corner is going to be open, particularly with the way Syracuse has been lifting those bottom line wings. If I told you 15 minutes into a game, Hughes would have no points, yeah. Dolajai would have two, and Bayheim would have three. You'd say Syracuse is getting blown yeah, out, ugly, but because right? of that guy right there, Gerard, they are in the game. And sometimes, I mean, we think of, of things like this as opportunity. Well, for a lot of players, they need more responsibility. You know, with, with less personnel on the floor, it's your responsibility to go out there and make or, or create opportunities for yourself and for others to knock down shots, to take tough shots. Sometimes good scorers like taking tough shots. Rebound, rebound. Let's go to Brooke for an update. Well, guys, I just uh, heard that Elijah Hughes actually hurt his had a muscle strain I should say in warm-ups he noticed it and he's still possibly going to come back in this game so don't rule him out just yet and we just saw him stand up to yell something to Gary a, and he's got like a wrap or some tape going across his left thigh and groin area so we'll keep an eye on him and see if he comes back in maybe in the second half Johnson misses the three Gerard down with a rebound Gerard knocking down a couple of free throws last time down. One of the best free throw shooters in the country. He's got half of the Orange's points. Behind. Wide right. Rebound Johnson. Johnson again to Andre in the corner. Not this time. Orange ball. And I like what NC State's done, bringing the shooter into the corner. Just see if you can flatten out that defense. If you flatten out the defense, you open up passing lanes from the wing to the high post, wing to the, the to the low post, but also you open up driving lanes. It's the best way to carve up a zone is attack it. Johnson, who just picked up that second, will head to the bench for Kevin Keats in his third year as the head coach in Raleigh. And Dolajai can do this. He can go end to end sometimes, but he just got called for the offensive foul. I actually like when he goes end to end. 
Just didn't need to chuck the shoulder. It's hard, though. Look, he's getting a lot of contact. That's the thing. I mean, I understand. You're getting a lot of contact. The defender's into your body. I would have thrown a chicken wing, too. Just if you don't extend the arm, you might get away with it. Daniels will hoist it. Tip out by Andre. Bryce for three. Got it. And stayed back on top. That shot's there because they brought Andre back to the corner. Again, three guys on one side. You can't cover them all. The entire defense has to rotate. Not this time for Gerard. Beheim the rebound. And Dolajai is fouled by Bates. Gerard and, Gerard and Beheim are going to take some bold shots uh, by the end of the night. And I'm going to absolutely love it. C.J. Bryce, look at this. The overload one side. Pull those guards up. You're going to have open look opportunity. Making more threes than two so far in this game. The biggest story, really, Elijah Hughes, 19 and a half points per game, leaving two and a half minutes in with a lower body injury. Joe Gerard has picked up the slack, scoring half of Syracuse's points. C.J. Bryce has made three threes for the Wolfpack. And as was mentioned in the studio, NC State not doing anything on the glass. Again, the importance of this game. Both of these teams appear to be on the outside looking in right now. Both of them need this win to improve their case. We're less than a month from Selection yeah. Sunday. Hard to believe. Where's this season going? And I will say, North Carolina State is trying to get the ball in the post. That's why you bring that man down to the corner, flatten that defense out. You're going to create opportunities like that. that. That was all based on getting the ball to the corner, then attacking those open areas. Foul on Quincy Garrier, who's been really good off the bench for Syracuse tonight, his first on the night. And at the line of Manny Bates, one of the best shot blockers around. Hey, the crossover is back for a seventh year, Thursday on ESPN and the ESPN app. Again, pairing a college analyst with an NBA analyst. You can see the Bucks and the Pacers crew, the Lakers and Nuggets. Dave Pashto in double duty, working Thursday and Friday. And on Friday, he's got a Mark Jackson-Bill Walton combo for the Colorado-Oregon game. It's probably because I'm not sure who else they'd put with Walton. That's <laughs> probably what it's more about. There's Dolezal. He's got more length than strength, but it worked for him that time. Yeah, and he looks, still has that perfect baby face, too. Looks like he's about 14 years old, but I'll tell you, I really like this guy's game. I think if given more opportunities, he could really influence the basketball game. He's a tough matchup. He's got great length. He plays multiple positions defensively and handles it well. We saw him lead the break, but that, that four and five leading the way. Yep. Had 22 points in the loss to Duke 10 days ago. Foul on Manny Bates, his third. He's gone to the bench. Funderburk's on the bench with two. So Danny Dixon is back into the game now for the Wolfpack. It's a big three minutes here. I don't have a problem if NC State keeps taking three so long as that's the open shot. You can't pass up the right shot. So you end up holding it and you get a bad shot. We talked about it. At practice yesterday. Look how high up the wings come yes. in that Syracuse zone. Well, I think that's partially to do with the fact that the guards just don't have the typical length that we see from Syracuse. They can't close that passing window right there, and that, that's exactly what we're talking about. Guards have to stay closer to the paint to close down that passing lane. That's where you get beat the most. So you bring the wings up on the side to at least provide support wide. Jericho Helms, the sophomore from St. Louis, he's been good at the free throw line. He's made some good decisions there for NC State. Sidibe. And he'll run it down. Didn't know somebody was behind him. Out of bounds to Syracuse. A break there for the Orange. Sidibe had no idea that Markel Johnson was trying to run him down. Well, NC State's got to corral every rebound, too. They, they, can't, they haven't been effective on the offensive glass. You have to make sure it's one shot and done for Syracuse. Gerard gets the switch. Behind. Pull up. A little bit short. Buddy Beheim with just three again. Gerard leading the way. Well, you gotta think Buddy Beheim's probably gonna get the best defender. That's usually Elijah Hughes. So, so he's gonna have a more athletic and lengthy defender. I think he's had a tough time getting it going. And hell, I'm not another one down. You said he was good at the foul line. How about from three? 
He's got seven right now. Missed their game last Wednesday against Miami with a shoulder problem, but showing no issues here tonight. It's easy. You start making some shots. Yeah, the issues go away. Yeah. The goal is on all kinds of traffic. Here's Gary. Nice move. Very under control. Quincy Garrier, maybe the unsung hero here in the first half for Syracuse. And a steal. Gerard. Garrier again. Over the top. Daniels from Johnson. That was an important basket. They got an easy one, didn't have to face the zone. Hard to call that a real transition opportunity because it seemed as if the defense was just lackadaisically getting back. Not this time for Gerard. And it's going to be Dolajai over the back with his second. And I would say that's one of the risks when you bring those bottom line wings up. They're, they're a little bit higher to start. You see, they're not getting back to the basket. sidibe has got to be the one there. If he's not there, someone's got to get back. That's just too easy. And you, you ask any coach what's the best way to beat the zone, and they all say Throw score the before they get <laughs> set up, right? To get down the court quickly. And with that guy quarterback, then you got a shot. I still think with those wings high, there are opportunities to throw over the top so long as bigs hold their ground. If you chase the basketball from block to block and hold your position, there's going to be an opportunity as, as Sadiq is fighting over the top. Just throw over the top. It's going to be open. I hope when you ask a question that's rhetorical and I still answer it wrong. <laughs> well, if you'd come to rehearsal, I told you that the last oh, yeah. game we did. Uh, I, was Johnson. Too, I was too busy practicing yeah. my snowball yeah. skip. Johnson will sit down because he's got two. So Chase Graham, a freshman from Raleigh, will get about 30 seconds worth of run here. Two, three second difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Daniels not giving an inch to Gerard, about 45 feet from the basket. Needs a screen, needs some help. Beheim, Dolajai missed it. State's got time. Oh, and Beheim gets whistled for the foul, and his father slash coach is not amused. I mean, it was a foul. I know Jim Beheim doesn't want the call. It, it's a foul, and it was almost a foul because it was such a broken transition play. I mean, I'm not sure. Bryce, he, Bryce was more concerned with looking at the clock to see how much time he had. Just unfortunate. Bryce knocks down the front end. He's got a dozen. Let's see if he was, I always get a kick out of coaches that argue everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a foul. I'm so glad I'm not an official. <laughs> Good Lord. Not a bad effort from 70 feet away by Dolajai. Not a bad half of basketball. Syracuse in trouble early without Hughes fell down by as many as nine took the lead and then NC State rallies late to take a four point lead to the break. Brooke Weisbrod is with Kevin Keats. Coach I heard you talking about increasing your team's defensive pressure. How did you feel the last five minutes of this half. Well I thought we let them off the hook. You know we started off very aggressive. We got some turnovers. They struggled a little bit against our pressure and then I thought we relaxed some. And how about the turnovers? What can you do to help uh, maximize your possessions? Well, I, I think our post guys got to do a better job in the middle of the zone. We're rushing. We found guys in the short corner. We're dropping passes. Uh, we'll do a better job in the second half. Great. Thanks, Coach. Four-point lead for the Wolfpack, who closed the half on an 11-2 run. Stay tuned for the E-Trade Halftime Report with Kevin, Seth, and Sean right after these games take control and we now have official word from Syracuse that Elijah Hughes will not return tonight Joe Girard carried the orange at times CJ Bryce a big first half for NC State 10 assists on 13 made baskets for the Wolfpack that's the good news 10 turnovers for NC State that's the bad news you got Braxton Beverly down there in the corner that they're going to try to flatten this defense out 
And a very small lineup right now for Kevin Keats. Manny Bates, who got 3,000 in the first half, does not start the second half. So it's really four guards around Thunderbird. Yeah, really, the big thing is just having the guards rebound defensively. They haven't done much on the offensive glass anyway. So it really comes down to just being a good defensive rebounding team, limiting that, limiting, excuse me, the orange to one shot. Rice tipped away by Sidibe, but the Orange cannot corral the loose ball. And I like what NC State's doing. They're using the bounce to drag the defense with them. As they drag the defense and that space opens up, they're going to find opportunities. That's going to be out of bounds. Yeah, how, how often do you see that? A bounce pass from out of bounds where it bounces out of bounds. Is that another rhetorical question <laughs> that I could get wrong? I'm just going to be careful. Just nod and have... smile there, yes. buddy. <laughs> Beverly staying with Gerard. Can they get Beheim going? Just three points for Buddy Beheim. He's averaging 16.6. Garrier, who gets the start because of the injury to Hughes here in the second half, can't finish. Thunderbird. That will be a foul on Sidibe. And Jim Beheim is showing the defensive position he feels Sidibe had, and that, that shouldn't have been a foul. Had his arm straight up in the air, according to his coach. Yeah, we'll see. I, I do like when they, when they give the defense right to verticality. We'll see. He turns into him. I don't know. Again, I'm high. I'm just glad I'm not an official. <laughs> I, I, I think some of the best things you can do as a defensive player is to jump. Officials have done a good job. When you elevate and go straight into the air, it's obvious who created the contact. And it's number three on Sidibe. Syracuse fans who saw the game against Wake on the weekend remember Sidibe fouled out, yeah. Garrier fouled out, Dolajai fouled out. It was kind of a miraculous comeback win given the piecemeal lineup that they had out there. Well, I would say miraculous if you can win without a life of Hughes. I, I yeah. mean, one of the best players in this conference, one of the best scorers in the country. Second in scoring in the conference behind Jordan Wara of Louisville. <laughs> Garrier, another putback. Boy, Daniels doing a great job moving him without the ball. Tip won't go. Daniels had it, and it bounces to Beverly. Great hustle by Devin Daniels. Well, I thought Daniels had Braxton Beverly wide open in the corner. Just didn't fight. So the four-guard look means that Bryce is the decision-maker in by the foul line instead of one of the bigs. Daniels gets the bounce. And has something to say to a young Syracuse fan in the first row, pleasant enough, as he makes his way back down the court. Yeah, he was smiling, right? Yeah. You can never say anything mean when you're smiling. The kid's chowing down on food. I don't think it bothered him at all. <laughs> Johnson saves it. But they lose it. Boy, that's going to drive Kevin Keats crazy. I really like what we're seeing from Gary. I mean, he is just attacking. He's being the aggressor. Kind of the same call you saw on the other side. Was the defense going straight up? I don't know. It doesn't matter. It's a foul. But Gary has been aggressive. He's going to have to be. They're limited offensively. Smoke. And the freshman just tied his season high with 14 points. And they've needed every one of them. Ball sticking a little bit right now. Daniel, floater, yes. Well, the ball's sticking because they're having a tough time figuring out what the top line guards are doing. The guards are almost coming into a tandem as opposed to staying out wide. They're eliminating that pass to the high post. Gerard, he's got 16. That was a terrific finish, by the way. Just to get your body into the defender, but settle down on the shot. It's going to be off Beverly's leg. The Gerard hustle creates another turnover. I want you to pay attention to this. Joe Gerard does a great job leaning to get his body into the defender and then stops, goes straight up. Just enough space to get that shot up and then getting dirty on the floor. Diving for the loose ball, creating the turnover. I guess it's not a turnover if it's a loose ball. But... 
Can they get either Dolezal or Bayheim going? Bayheim a miss, and Garrier doing it yet again. Might be your best offense. Throw up a bad yeah. shot, let yeah. Garrier go get it. And I would not be living up to my obligations as a Canadian citizen if I didn't point out he's from Montreal. <laughs> Sure, all of Canada thanks you. <laughs> Daniels, top turnaround. Gary A with a rebound. Fade away, Gerard, and he banked it home. Whether he meant to do it is a whole other story, but they all count the same, and Gerard whipping him into a frenzy again. You know, this place is so unique, playing in a football stadium. Yep. Whether there are 20,000 or 30,000 here, there's just such a love affair in this city for this program, yep. even when they're not having a great year. And they're not having a great year, but look at how people turn out for this team. I mean, they should. They should. I mean, this is a, a storied basketball program. I mean, look, I'm not sure what else you'd be doing on a Tuesday night here in Syracuse, but. You got the beer garden in the back or yeah. whatever that I had no idea that was here by the way <laughs> I thought that was shot earlier in the day Sidibe his fourth we get our first look at Jesse Edwards a freshman from Amsterdam Beverly the miss Thunderbird with the thunderous finish look at Edwards running the floor the pace so far I mean, playing at a football stadium and, <laughs> and Brooke Weisbrod is uh, finding out just how big this place really is um, I'm getting my Stairmaster workout for the second time today trying to catch my breath up here but everybody I've talked to said it's the best seat in the house I'm sitting here next to Gracie one of the fans here everybody enjoys it and these fans have got to be in incredible shape to come up here all season long but it's it's pretty nice actually I gotta say maybe we'll call the game up here next time <laughs> that's okay <laughs> They average better than 20,000 fans a game. They had better than 31,000 for the game against Duke back in the 1st of February. I was telling you before the game, living in Toronto, I drove down here a couple of times as a teenager with some yep. buddies to see college basketball games back in the 80s and said way, way up in the corner where you could hardly see when they would play Georgetown or Villanova to have 30-plus thousand. It's just a cool place to come see a game. It's it, different. It really is, but it's also a passionate fan base. It's a team with storied history. I think that, that's the biggest thing, too. I also love the fact that you've had a coach for how many years? I mean, 44. That's, that's one of the big things that you can't say enough about. When programs have longevity, when it comes to coaching staffs, you understand the identity of the program. You understand what you're going to get night in, night out. Obviously, the zone's part of that. Well, think of this. For Jim Beheim, if you combine his games as a player, an assistant, and the head coach here, it's game number 1,736 for him at Syracuse. That's impressive. That's crazy. That's impressive. <laughs> I just, it's, there's a number that we yeah. throw out there that yeah. we really don't think enough about. Shot clock at five. Helens. Bates. And a foul. And it might be game number 1,736. The passion is still there, though, isn't it? <laughs> Coming up next over on ESPN, a big one of the Big Ten of Michigan State and Illinois from Champaign. You can see it live on ESPN or the ESPN app. Again, the Spartans looking to turn things around. They've lost three in a row. They got game yeah. day there in East Lansing on the weekend when Maryland comes to town. Yeah, but you understand what, what that program is dealing with. I think the tough thing is it's, it's sort of we're in the Big Ten where it is bottom to top I think the Big Ten's as strong as it ever been and, that, and that's what it means I say it's hard to find a night where you can get yourselves right in the Big Ten and I, I think that's the case that, it's not as top heavy as other leagues but they're really no easy night out right this league has three top ten yes. teams Louisville Duke Florida and Florida State and then it's got a number of teams including these two hoping to get into the conversation hoping to play in the NCAA tournament, Buddy Bayheim with just his second field goal of the night. I think we do get caught up in narrative sometimes, and the narrative of the fact that this is a weak conference, or the narrative of the fact that college basketball is down. I'm tired of that sometimes, too. One point lead, Wolfpack, six minutes into the second half. Good shot fake by Bryce. 
Helms, nice kick to Daniels. Good rebound in traffic by Bayheim and a foul on Daniels. The defense has really ratcheted up. And I think that's been the best thing for Syracuse in the sense that they're not allowing any easy pass to the top of the, uh, the foul line. And, and that's the problem for, for NC State right now. They're trying so hard to get the ball to the foul line that it's not moving quickly enough around the perimeter. And again, a lot on the line. At this point in February, I don't know if you can say it's an elimination game, but these are two programs in desperate need yes. of a win here in this game tonight. Bates does what he does best with a rejection. He makes it look easy, too. He's got, what, three a game, and he plays yeah. about 20 minutes a game. That's remarkable. Helms from the elbow. Mm. That, that's the shot. But where did the ball go first? The ball had to get down towards the corner to open up those passing lanes to get it where they want to get the ball. Beheim. Oh. Gets the bounce. He's having to be creative right now because they're not letting him get a good look from beyond the arc. Yeah, but he's got the size advantage over Beverly, so he's going to attack and look to take that jumper every single time. Good pass by Bryce leads to another foul. Just to back up the point we were just making about why this game is important. You got these four programs who are either just in, just out, hoping to get in the conversation. And again, Notre Dame's at Virginia right after us tonight on ESPN2. This is a ACC Bubble Tuesday here tonight on ESPN2. We might have a few more Bubble Tuesdays left in yeah. the ACC. <laughs> it's just kind of how it is. Third foul on Edwards, who was in the game because Sidibe's got four. I still think NC State's got to keep pushing the ball down and out to the corners. If you force the ball from the top of the key to the high post area, the defense has been there. They've converged. you got to get the ball moving quickly. Get it out to Braxton Beverly along that wing, closer to the baseline, and the rotations are not there enough so that it opens up the passing lanes through the paint. How about Dolajai getting the ball over this time? Again, we mentioned he can do that, and every now and again he'll go end-to-end -end and lay one in. And Mike Eads has called an official's timeout. Something going on with Daniel, some sort of a an injury or something that is forcing him out of the game. So Mike Eads blew the whistle to get him out of there. I love the booing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The boo. I mean, look, no advantage. Right. I mean, basically what you're booing is saying, no, we wanted to play against a guy who's hurt. I mean, come <laughs> on, guys. Gerard. Fouled by Beverly, and he'll shoot three. And Beverly has been attacked. I don't want to use the term abused defensively, but it's been pretty close to that. They have continued to go after Beverly every single time down floor. 92% free throw shooter, one of the best in the country. Say what? It's like a lot. It's, it's, a, it's, it's uncanny. We're not that important. I just... <laughs> try it again on this third one. Go ahead. 92% free throw shooter. One of the best in the country. There. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I didn't believe it actually meant anything, but there was a part of me that was kind of like, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. This is an important possession if you're NC State. That That'll helps. work. Over the top to Bates. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. If you're taking things away at the high post, defense is getting lifted a bit on that ba that back line. Over the top might be there. Assist number six for Markel Johnson. Jeez. He can really handle. But now a turnover. Pass hitting. The out of bounds line, turning it back over to the orange. We're talking to Kevin Keats about Markel Johnson. He said the most important thing is just finding consistency. And easier said than done, especially when you play in a conference like the ACC. Yeah, he'll have one turnover games, and he'll have five turnover games. Gerard feeling it. Tipped by Edwards, but Helms has it. You hate to say something like make the simple play. Look, guy's too gifted to make the simple play. There, there are players that you allow to be a little bit more aggressive than others. Helms gets another touch. Good look, Beverly. Great ball movement by the Wolfpack, but they couldn't knock down the shot. 
Bayheim. Bayheim into double figures, and the game is tied again. And better than 22,000 on their feet here in the Carrier Dome. Bryce rises up for a three. And another rebound for Garrier. Edwards inside. First lead of the second half for the Orange. Buddy Bayheim finally gets it going. Look, he's had to make the way comfortably with 11 teams in. Strange to see the ACC with only four. The big three of Louisville, Duke, and Florida State. And Joey Brackets has Virginia in right now. Syracuse, NC State, Notre Dame, the next three. But all of them, according to Joe on the outside, looking into the moment, this is a big one. Olajai, big bucket. Just a simple sit down. He got the ISO, cleared space. Lots of dummy action screened down for shooters. He sat down, was patient. Shot, shot blocker flies by and he finished. Bayheim and Dolajai heating up in the second half for the Orange. Beverly. Big three for the Wolf Pack. It's a one point game. It's a huge three. And now the question is, can Beverly defend? If they get this switch, this is where I would look to isolate, clear, create space. Bayheim's going to shoot a jump shot. Speaks to Garrier, who gives it right back to Bayheim. And Bates, another block. Shot clock does not reset. Edwards looking for help. They got 10. Gerard baseline. And a block is the call. Timeout on the floor in a good one here in Syracuse. The Orange leading the Wolfpack by one. Against Illinois. There are the two big guys for NC State. What do they have in common? They both got four fouls right now. So Kevin Keats has gone with a very small lineup. Jericho Helms, a 6'7 kind of wing guy, is in effect, John. The five man right now for the Wolfpack. So, so basically the Houston Rockets. That's yeah. what we're looking at right now in red. And you know it's funny looking down at the other end of the court, you can see Dolajai, <laughs> Edwards, and Gary <laughs> saying, "Well, who do you, who are you going to cover? Who should I cover?" Jim Beheim might need to downsize a little bit to counter this lineup. We'll see how it plays out. We will have a playmaker here at the foul line. Helms, that shot, Edwards got a piece of it. It stays with NC State, 13 on the shot clock. And if, if Helms going to get a, a little bit longer of a closeout as he did right there, pump fake and get in the lane, that's going to be ideal. Look how tight the guards are up top. It's just not going to be there from the top of the key. Bryce backs it out, four to shoot. Johnson. Amazing how different it is when you don't have size, even on the offensive end, because Syracuse was able to pack things in, take passes away. We talked about the lack of length, the guard position for, for Syracuse, but clearly not the case against this lineup for NC State. Dolajai can't get by Bryce. How about that? A chance for three for Marek Dolajai. But well, we've seen the isolations for Elijah Hughes. We've seen it for Buddy Beheim. Every now and then we've seen it for Joe Girard. I have yet to see it for Mark Dolezal. I like the fact he took contact, went right back into the body of C.J. Bryce, got him up and finished. If he could put on weight, and believe me, they try. We all wish we could be on the Marek Dolezal diet. If he could put on weight, can you imagine? He's a good player now. I know, can I you imagine good how player. good he would be? Let's go to Brooke for more. 
Exactly. Most of us didn't have the problem of trying to gain weight our freshman year in college, but yeah, Dolajai, he chows down. Not only does he drink four protein shakes each day, each one's about 600 calories, but listen oh. to his breakfast. Eggs, bacon, hash browns, bagel, donuts. Yes, please. Plus four protein shakes. I'd be asleep by 11 in the morning if I ate like that. I'd have a lot more problems than just asleep. <laughs> Jeez, that would be great. Sleeping sounds amazing. <laughs> Edwards. Woo. I think he was coming up to set a screen and then got a pass that he was not expecting. And he's no, called for this. travel, and Jim Beheim wants an explanation. Under eight media timeout. This is a good one. Syracuse leading by five. The Embillis on the Lakers and Nuggets on Wednesday night. Then a couple of games coming your way Thursday as well. Doris Burke is coming back to call a college game in Cincinnati as they take on Memphis. All kinds of fun coming does up Mark, and all kinds of fun here tonight. Yeah, does Mark Jackson know what he's getting into? <laughs> <laughs> Dave Pash will tell him. Gundy's tough. <laughs> Five point game. Big game for the Wolfpack and the Orange. Bryce, tough shot, and it'll go. Bryce now with 14. I don't mean to state the obvious, but that's a huge shot to see fall. I mean, right now, I think you're going to work to get a mismatch. If you can get Braxton Beverly on somebody, you've got to attack. Thunder, I don't know about this. Sorry, John. Thunderbird back in the game for NC State, playing with four fouls. Beheim. And he got called for a push off. Second time tonight, he's extended an arm and gotten called for an offensive foul. Yeah, and that was great defense. I mean, it's not the matchup you want. You, you don't want to attack Markel Johnson. He's playing. I mean, this is good defense. It's just extending the arm. I, I actually like to call. It's good defense. I, I would seek out the mismatch. Run ball screens. Do what you got to do. Interchange. Get that guy who won Braxton Beverly an attack. Johnson with a penetration off to Thunderbird and he's fouled. It's good ball movement and you, and you get the defense scrambling a bit. They're chasing the basketball. It opens up driving lanes, passing lanes. You can see how much more aggressive you're able to be, particularly when you got the ball in the right guy's hands in Markel Johnson. Thunderbird 75% from the line on the season. Just the first foul on Garrier, who's managed to play very aggressively without committing fouls. One of two. The front of the, the foul trouble has kind of just kept him from getting into a rhythm here. He's been impactful when he's in the game. Just yeah. haven't been able to play as much. And he's their leading scorer in seven of their last 11 games coming into this one. Gerard, huge in the first half. It is. But, but look what they're doing. I mean, they're isolating Braxton Beverly. That, I would go at him every single time. I know this because I used to be that guy. <laughs> and the freshman, Joe Gerard has just tied his season high with 24 points. Tipped out. Gerard's got it. And a foul. And maybe a good time to remind folks who might not have been with us all night long that Elijah Hughes is out. Only played two and a half minutes out with an injury. And as soon as that happened, you know that Joe Girard must have said to himself, I got to give him all I can give him. You know what? That's not a defensive foul, too, by the way. Uh, I think Markel Johnson went straight up. Joe Girard created the contact. We're supposed to, uh, to give verticality. A lot of Orange fans out there will, will not like me for saying that, but Markel Johnson went straight up for the block shot. Joe Girard went in and created the contact. Just as a little advice here. Yeah. If you're anywhere in central New York, you can't say anything about Joe Girard without incurring the wrath of people. Oh, he's, a, he's a rock star in this state, man. You know that. He didn't do any. I would have done the same thing. <laughs> we are told, by the way, yep. that ever since he's come to Syracuse, that bar business in Glens Falls has picked up noticeably. <laughs> Everybody goes out to the bars to watch the basketball games here at the, at the Carrier Dome. Just wait. As his career continues, but you got to think he's a four-year guy, too. And, and, man, there's not a lot of them, especially at his level. 
Over the top hey. for Edwards. Boy, and just too much traffic there. there. Yeah. Floater Daniels, well done. It's amazing, you know, the, the bad pass over the top. You kind of anticipated that throw, right? You thought it was going to be there on the roll. And then two points on the other end. If you're Syracuse, again, create space, find the matchup you like, and attack right here. Dolezal, the offensive foul. Yeah. Number three on Dolezal. Hey, look, it's arm and shoulder. That's what you got to watch for. Arm and shoulder. I, I don't know. I mean, that, that's an offensive foul. Got to be in balance. If you keep your chest and head up, you can avoid that call. for three. Banks it in. He's got 20 and states back within one. It's exactly as you draw it up, right? <laughs> what a good game this has been. Gerard for three. <laughs> and that'll be Syracuse ball. Now, what would you do back in your playing days when you banked one home for a three? You know, I'd be embarrassed enough to just run back, act like nothing happened. I'd like to see some video evidence of that. <laughs> I, I knew, I, I knew if, if I was going to hear about it, I'd just run back. Because I knew the points would count later. Gerard misses a three. State can take the lead. And they will, thanks to Daniels again. <laughs> Daniels is chirping away. He's got something to say after every made basket. It's even a banked in three from the top of the key. Timeout, Jim Beheim. A one point lead for the Wolfpack with 4.16 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Progressive Insurance. Get slam dunk savings today. Visit progressive.com. Back into this game. And the Wolfpack with a one point lead, 4.16 to go. Joe Girard has a season high, 26. Jim Beheim's been going without Hughes just about all night because of the injury. And Sidibe never really came back into the game. Jesse Edwards is getting minutes in the middle. A freshman who doesn't play all that much. He's been in there for a long time here in the second half. Beheim off a screen. Nice steal by Johnson. Ahead to Bryce, two on one. And a foul on Dolezal. That'll be number four. And he doesn't like the call. Now, I'll tell you one thing he's not going to do, because in the game Saturday against Wake, on a play where the ball was out of bounds and he disputed it, he pointed up to the video board to say to the official, look at the replay, and he got teed up for his fifth foul. Fouled out on a technical. Yeah, he actually didn't make any contact with the ball. C.J. Bryce actually lost it out of bounds. A little bit of contact on the bottom, but we've seen a lot of that today with no call. Although, every time Syracuse fouls somebody or gets called for a foul, you're going to hear booing either yeah. way. And it's likely Jim Beheim's going to argue the call. State extends the lead to three, and now Sidibe is going to check back into the game for Edwards for Syracuse. Edwards has been good. Yeah. He's just been, I would say, active. You're not asking him to do a lot. You just want him to impact the basketball game in a positive way. He's attacked the offensive glass, kept some possessions alive. Good help there by Funderburg. Gerard still going. Boy, he's got a lot of different ways to score, doesn't he? Well, I also like the fact that he understands DJ Funderburg's got four fouls, and he went right at him. He's not going to be contested if you go into the chest of the shot block. And they get to their feet once again. Here are the carrier dome. And a three rattles in for Markel Johnson. A bit of a silence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's go, baby. Daniels with a rejection on Gerard at the other end. 
Markel Johnson, we talked about the silence. So defense trying to get spaced out. Almost looked like he faked the pass to the corner. Gurry A just kind of dropped back. Opened up the opportunity for Johnson. Devin Daniels with a big block there on the baseline. A little talking to from the yep. officials. Gerard. Johnson the rebound. Well, that would have been huge, to say the least. I like the shot. A lot of people say, no, that's not a good look. Well, if it goes in, it's a game changer. The kid's got 28 tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And again, no Elijah Hughes. You, you've got to take you've got to take and make more tough shots because of what you're missing on the bench. Yeah. 240 to go. CJ Bryce. A huge bucket for the Wolf Pack. And all of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. How about the patience to sit down, right? You know, we talked about that. Kevin Keats mentioned that. He said. We have to have patience. We have to sit down when we catch the ball in the paint or at the foul line. That's exactly what they just did. Sat down with the basketball. It felt like an eternity. It really wasn't that long. Watch as the ball moves, gets down low. You're just going to sit there. That was just going to sit there for a second. Felt like it was about three seconds. It was really about half a second. But that's an eternity in a possession. They got an open look and knocked it down. And give the Wolf Pack a lot of credit. There have been some momentum swings in this game. The crowd's been going crazy when Syracuse has been playing well. And NC State, they just yep. keep running their stuff, and the guards keep making plays. Well, I think that not only are they making plays, they're making shots. Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. I mean, when, when the crowd picks up, it gets harder and harder to make those shots. They've had good poise throughout. And I think the lineup they've got on the floor right now is a better defensive lineup. Braxton Beverly's off the floor. It's been tougher to get shots over top of the rest of the defenders. And Kevin Keats has kept adjusting who's on the floor according to the situation. And it's paying off for him right now. Let's see if the Orange have a response. Dolezal with a strong spin and drive, and he draws the foul. Sports Center tonight after Michigan State, Illinois over on ESPN with Abucci and Anderson. Tim Legler will break down the Clippers and the Sixers. Zion Williamson is back. He'll take on the Trailblazers. And the impact of baseball's cheating scandal as pitchers and catchers and others start reporting to spring training. It is still a big, big topic of conversation around Major League Baseball. You can see pitchers, lawsuits, and <laughs> it's a it's huge, man. Yeah, Mike Bolsinger, a big league pitcher most recently in 2017. His last outing was against Houston, and it didn't go <laughs> yeah. very It was in Houston, didn't go very well, got sent down, and has not made it back to the big league since. You know, in basketball, everybody knows what you want to do. It's just about doing it better than everybody else. The call is overturned. It'll be Syracuse ball. That was emphatic. That, that was, was a Leslie Nielsen punch out <laughs> from Naked Gun. Yeah. Wonder how many people get that. I'll tell you, Mike Roberts can go from zero to 60 in a hurry as well. Now they almost give it back. A little miscommunication between Dolajai and Gerard. Edwards back into the game for the Orange. Dolajai using his height advantage. Too strong. Looks like Beheim has called for the foul, his third. And it's two free throws the rest of the way for the Wolfpack. It's interesting to see Syracuse pick up full court pressure. I think if you're NC State, you got to get the ball into Markel Johnson's hands. He can dribble right through it. He's getting the front court. He's also, Johnson, ironically, the worst free throw shooter of the five on the floor. You don't see that very often from a point guard. This is Helens, who's a very good free throw shooter at 77%. There are cases where there's somebody who's not your best free throw shooter, but there's something about trusting him in a big situation. I'm not going to say that's Mark Johnson, but got a lot of guys like that. Obviously, if anybody's on the floor and I want him to shoot a free throw, it's probably Joe Girard. Just don't want you to say anything right. before he shoots it. <laughs> We've learned our lesson. Six point game. Almost two minutes. Still got a lot of time. If you're Syracuse. Oh, 
Syracuse ball 17 on the shot clock. You know, Markel Johnson covering Buddy Beheim has been he's really shut him down. I mean he's just making he's fighting over top of screens. He's forcing Buddy Beheim to, to take shots further and further from the basket. I would look to create space more for Joe Girard at this point playing with great confidence. Just give him room and let him go to work. And the I think we're going to have an official review. They might be looking at who knocked the ball out of bounds there. Not sure. We'll get word momentarily I hope. Oh, we haven't had one yet today. No, so. we haven't. I love the Syracuse fans behind yeah. him. No, you got it right, right? Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah, in my opinion, you made the right call. <laughs> and and they have confirmed it. Nice quick review, and it is it does remain Syracuse ball. I still think you should have a fourth official over there to just chime in really quickly. Someone and trustworthy. Of and I got to undo a mistake. I called Mike Steve Michael Stevens Mike Roberts. I'm sorry hey. Michael. So Michael Stevens was the guy racing down the court. It's okay. A little bit earlier. Proves I don't listen to you. So. Yeah. <laughs> As if that was hey, ever in get question. Get in line. <laughs> sorry Mr. Stevens. Oh, and Gerard my God. draws the foul. Hey. I really like Joe Gerard with the ball. To say. He plays like he's a senior. Like he's an experienced veteran he just understands how to change speeds change directions use ball fakes head fakes eye fakes hip fakes whatever he's got he's faking it and you're going with it you know he's a really good free throw shooter <laughs> you sometimes <laughs> Sadibe in for Edwards, a little offense defense at the five spot for the Orange. This is where, again, you mentioned Markel Johnson, not the best free throw shooter. I still want the ball in his hands. Still NC State ball. Jim Beheim is saying it should belong to Syracuse. They might have a look at it. Well, I'm sure they'll look at it. If I'm Kevin Keats. Uh, I've got to consider a timeout at some point because they have not had anything to get somebody open. That's not a good out of bounds along the baseline when you're about to receive pressure like that. Yeah, but the, the guy, the same guy in the hoodie, is oh, he's, convinced of the call again. I'm sure he is. And people, the fans don't understand how perspective skews anything. Yeah. Is he out of bounds? I don't know. Can you definitively see if his left foot was out of bounds there? Yeah. Then it's Syracuse ball, but unless you can definitively say his oh. left foot is out of bounds. <laughs> and the fans are looking at up on the big board, Jumbotron, yeah. whatever you call it in here, but you can't really tell. Not from that angle. No. There's our guy. There's official number four. I just don't know if you can tell if he's out of bounds. If you can tell he's out of bounds tell. from there, yeah. you got better eyesight than me. Look at Jerry McNamara staring right down at it. I want to see his response. Did see, he, he tells me that he may not have stepped out of bounds. He's pointing, but he's making that grinning face. You know, the grinning face is like, maybe you'll call it. I mean, you got to try to sell it, yeah. but. I don't, I don't see any way they I think that out. the obvious one is when someone just goes crazy right away. I think that means, okay, they, they probably they probably yeah. missed it. Oh, boy, there in the Syracuse sweatshirt. <laughs> he's getting some air time here with he, him. He's being so <laughs> helpful, he's isn't he? It's a good thing he cleaned that beard up before the game, too. <laughs> Didn't know he was going to get this kind of air time. Mom's getting texts right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. He's tremendous. Ah, he's going to be yeah, worse. Get closer. That'll endear yeah. you to them. Just because you got a wristband on doesn't doesn't mean you get let into the cool kid area. I don't know how you overturn it. I I don't think unless they're seeing an angle we yeah. don't have. I don't know how you overturn that. We'll get word. And Michael Stevens on his way over to give us the information. Uh, and as you said, uh, Michael Stevens telling us they don't have enough evidence to overturn it, so the call stays as it was. To the dismay of the fourth official over there. Yeah. <laughs> Wolf pack ball, a minute 35 to go, up by four. 
Don't forget Notre Dame and Virginia coming your way next. Another big game of the ACC comes up next year on ESPN2. Obviously, you don't need to foul. Mm -hmm. Still got a lot of time. Johnson asked for a screen. Three to shoot. And it's Syracuse ball. Dolajai saved it. Less than a minute to go. Don't need a three. Oh, and Beheim tried to thread the needle to Gerard, and it winds up in a hard foul at the other end by Sidibe to send Daniels to the line. And that'll foul out Sidibe. You know, far too often I see guys go to a ball screen in situations like that, and I never understand why you set the ball screen. Why? Because you bring defenders. You bring help. I think you got to trust your playmakers to be able to get inside the lane and at least get a good look at the rim. And just the, the spacing wasn't there, right? Yeah. It was just too congested for that pass. So Sidibe out. Daniels will be at the line, and NC State looking for a nice road win over another team that's kind of at about the same level, kind of the same resume that they've got. Notre Dame and Virginia have just tipped off on ESPN News. They'll move over to here to ESPN 2 at the conclusion of this game. Yeah, and I would say, I'd say Syracuse is there for now, and I'm only saying that be because, again, we've had no Elijah Hughes today. Right. And, and what that means going forward, even if it's just for two more games, th that could be everything this season. Well, their next two games yeah, are <laughs> at Florida State and at Louisville. Those are those great win opportunities. Exactly. Again, if you're looking at the glasses half full, you got a chance to pick up big time wins on the road. Daniels a miss. And there's not a lot of signature wins out there in the ACC. You almost have to, once you get through them, you almost have to look forward to the ACC tournament. This will, what just happened? Bryce kind of body Dolajai out of the lane before the free throw. And Michael Stevens, Mike Eads talking about it. They call it double. Do they call it double foul? And the ball is going to go to Syracuse. It's just silly. It's just it's just a goofy thing to do if you're C.J. Bryce. Well, I don't. It, I'm sorry. It's not a double foul. They just called a violation there on Bryce, right? Is that what they call? They did call double it lane double violation. lane so violation. So, it goes to the so then it went to the possession arrow. Okay, That's not double foul, it's double just lane a violation. Silly thing to do. Yeah. I mean, presence of mind. Understand the situation. You're up four, 48 seven seconds left. Opportunity not. What are you doing? I mean, I, I have no idea what you could be thinking in yeah. that moment. And look, I don't mean to be so critical of a kid, but at the same time, you got to understand the situation of the game here and how important this game is when you consider everything that we just showed you out of that last break and how important these games are. While we have a moment, let's go back to the studio with Kevin Agandi. Dan, also want to remind our audience, as you just did over on ESPN News, tip-off underway. They are two minutes into the game at Virginia as they are hosting Notre Dame. That game on ESPN News, of course, we will go to it after the conclusion at Syracuse. All right, Kevin, thank you. Notre Dame kind of sneaky creeping into the bubble <laughs> conversation, are. right? They are. They're pretty good, too. And John Mooney, I mean, gosh. I might not take him first, but he's definitely on my team. Dolajai finds Gerard. Dolajai is called for the travel. That's the right call. Dol Dolajai tried to create contact. Funderburk backed off. And when he didn't receive the contact, he traveled because he was off balance. I get what he was trying to do, but it was definitely the right call. Hopefully, I, it confirms when we see a replay. Yeah, look, he's he's trying to create yeah. contact. Funderburg's yeah. backing off, pulled the chair on him. Now, if they don't get a quick steal, now they got to start fouling. Yeah, right? you got to start fouling. That's why Braxton Beverly's in the game. Bayheim, his fourth. It's interesting. If you're NC State, the player that can get open the easiest is Markel Johnson. He's actually not the one trying to get open. I mean, we understand why. Not the best free throw shooter, but but that's a challenge. You almost have to come up with something better to get the ball in bounds. 
Daniels can match his career high if he knocks down these two free throws. I still go back to that double lane violation. Just weird. Yeah, you want Gerard bringing this ball up if you can. Precious seconds ticking away. Gerard inside, no. NC State ball, and Daniels will head back to the free throw line. And they're getting close now to a big road win. You know, it felt like for a while this was going to go the, the way of the orange. Yeah. And Joe Gerard rolling, and I, I go back, that Buddy Bayheim three. That's where I felt like, all right, Syracuse has got control of this game. But North Carolina State has had answers. So on the offensive end, they've been able to get the ball to the baseline. They've been able to get the ball inside near the paint. And when they sat down and were patient, they were able to find open looks. Bayheim is fouled out. Bryson Goodine into the game for the Orange. You know, Buddy Bayheim, if, if Elijah Hughes is going to be out, Buddy Bayheim's going to get the, his opponent's best mm -hmm. in terms of defender. We talked about Syracuse's upcoming schedule. NC State, if they go on to pick up this win, it would be 16 and 8. They'd go to 7 and 6 mm -hmm. in the league. And remember, they have a win over Virginia, so they would win a tiebreaker of Virginia. They would have a win over Syracuse. They've got two games left with Duke and one with Florida State. Again, opportunities. Gerard, no. Edwards, no. And it's going to be the Wolf Pack of NC State coming north to Syracuse and getting out of town with a five point win and a big one. We'll see how it plays out over the next few weeks, but a big one for the Wolf Pack and what they hope are good chances to make the tournament. For John Crispin, Brooke Weisbrod, and our ESPN crew, I'm Dan Schulman. Thanks for watching from Syracuse. Mike Cousins, Corey Alexander, take it away.